Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming. On behalf of the <laughs> Sedona Elks Lodge, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, a Sedona treasure, Terry Frankel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for being here. It all began in 1956. I was six years old, and so was my twin sister. And our father took us to see the Ten Commandments at the Milford Theater. They gave away a free six-week course of accordion lessons. <laughs> and I won. <laughs> I would have rather had the bicycle. <laughs> So my father, who was a stage door father, who had already given us tap, ballet, acrobatic, he paid for my twin to have another six weeks of accordion lessons. Well, that led to 10 years of accordion lessons <laughs> once a week, which I refer to as child abuse. <laughs> but we did have a lot of fun because our father thought that we should perform for free everywhere. So we performed at Elks Lodges, Moose Lodges, VFWs, the Great Lakes Naval Hospital. And then when we were 16 years old, 10 years later, it all paid off. Our father wrote a letter to William Wrigley Jr. and said, I have two very, very talented twins. They sing, they dance, they play accordion, and they would be great for your double mint gum. So we auditioned at the Arthur Meyerhoff Advertising Company, and we got the job. <laughs> Two years later, our father wrote another letter. There was an ad in the Chicago Sun-Times. They wanted one accordionist to perform with the USO for a Chicago troop in Vietnam. My father said, oh, I got two accordionists. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing you know, we auditioned at the USO in downtown Chicago, got the job. <laughs> and then within a month, we found ourselves at Travis Air Force Base. And the following day, we were on a World Airways flight to Tan Sanut Air Base in Saigon. How many people here actually served in Vietnam? Wow, oh my God, that's great. Oh my goodness. And, uh, I, I know Edward Zemeckis is served, and uh, where, where are you and where did you serve? In Saigon. Saigon? Off of Tan Sanut. Oh right, okay, and where did you serve, Guy? 101st Airborne Division, up oh. north. I core. All right. Okay. Oh, I wish I could talk to all of you. Just stay after the show. I love GIs. <laughs> On our flight were all of these wide-eyed GIs fresh out of boot camp. And I wonder to this day how many of them made it out alive because there were over 58,000 men and women who died in Vietnam, Americans and over 300,000 were wounded. When we landed at Tam it was at night, and they took us on jeeps to our hotel rooms at the Saigon Hilton. Martha Ray was there at the same time. She was very, very big with the USO. And I remember waking up, they had actually had mosquito nets over the bed, and I looked outside and saw all of these women with these owl's eyes, their skirts that are slid up, riding bicycles. There was something very amazing about the air, the smell, the feel, the taste, everything. It was really a beautiful, beautiful country. And for us, being out of the United States for the first time, it was just an amazing experience. So we found out that the reason they wanted an accordionist 
is because unlike the Bob Hope show, our show was going to be dropped off in the boonies. And we performed for servicemen who would normally never get a USO show. So they would take us by Jeep, Chinook, Huey, uh, C-130s, out to Fu Bai, Fu Loy, Da Nang, Pleiku, Dalat, Cameron Bay, and other places in the boonies. And these servicemen would be waiting there for hours with their shirts off in the hot sun for a taste of round eyes. Our troop consisted of Joey Bishop of the Rat Pack, Tippy Hedron of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, Sig Sakowitz, who was a Polish personality, he more leader Rosen, and Sarah Sue from the Gaslight Club, the men loved her. She would bring all these people up on stage and dance with them and tease them and have a great time. The two times that I remember most are, one, they never actually had us stay out in the boonies at night. We were always shepherded home to our hotel room. So one night we were out in the boonies, it was very late, so they decided to let us stay in the tents. And in the middle of the night they rousted us up and they put us onto these helicopters and they shot out into the night sky and shepherded us home because VC had been seen in the area. And to this day, I wonder how many of those brave soldiers ever made it out. And then God bless them, I love them all. So, another interesting time was at uh, the Denang Hospital. We would visit hospitals and we'd see these wounded soldiers. They would triage them. We have actually someone among us, uh, Colonel Judith Patton, who was in charge of the 944th Air Medical Staging Squadron at Luke Air Force Base. And she also served in Afghanistan. And she also served in the Pentagon, but she knows all about triaging and taking care of these wounded and bringing them to Germany. But there, we would see all of these servicemen in bed. And one of them, his name was Sheldon Feldman, and his face had been blown off. And he reached over and he, he felt our, our hands and he squeezed them and he was just so grateful that we were there. <clears throat> we returned to Chicago and Jenny and I really, really wanted to go back to Vietnam. So we actually quit our scholarships. I had a scholarship at Chicago Music College of Roosevelt University. Jenny had a scholarship at Roosevelt. And we joined an all-girl band. They were called the She Five from Appleton, Wisconsin. I played uh, bass. My sister played keyboard. And we played at the Four Queens in Las Vegas. And then when we hit Hawaii, the lead guitarist said, I'm quitting the band. My husband is coming home from Vietnam. I, I, I was going to go there to see him. So the band just d d gave up. So Jenny and I ended up performing every night at the Davy Jones Locker at the Oddrigger Hotel for our and our people. And those, as you know, are people who went on their R&R &R from Vietnam to wherever they chose. Usually the married people chose Hawaii where they could meet their wives from the homeland. Uh, so we wrote a song, Jenny and I, and we call it the Vietnam USO Folk Song. We sang it for the R&R &R people. And luckily, someone recorded this song. So I put it to visuals of our time in Vietnam. And I would love to play that for you right now. It is, it is here, the Vietnam U.S. folk song. And I hope you enjoy it. And uh, thank you. And I'll be back after this. We took guitar in hand to visit all our brothers in a distant foreign land. We sang the songs of freedom from Saigon to Da Nang. 
While missiles rang their shrilling cry, they killed men while we sang. As children be but he thinks of war, but he can't speak a shrub no peace. Silence him evermore. Charlie ruled by terror. Observe how he behaves. We're just outside of Antheat, the VC live in graves. Natives can be pitied. Employ them if you can. But careful not to turn around, you'll die by traitors. Till the day my sister passed away in 2008, our most exciting, wonderful, rewarding experience was being with the USO in Vietnam. I lived in Vancouver, San Francisco, worked in Hong Kong, studied Cantonese and Mandarin. So we lived in, in LA, and in LA it's a whole other world. And here she is. This lively bachelorette is a writer who likes to travel and speaks fluent Cantonese. She loves music and comes to us from Chicago, Illinois. Let's welcome the terrific Terry Franco. Hello, Terry. Double your pleasure, double your fun with double good, double good, double mint gum. Double the delicious, double smooth too. Double mints, double delightful to chew. So double your pleasure, double your fun. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> Otherwise, all the other gum companies will want out. You know what I mean? We'll have to bring their twins in and it gets messy. I ended up being on the board of directors of the Producers Guild of America. My twin sister wrote theme songs for ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, and that got her into the Emmys. So she was an Emmy judge, very proud of that. She also helped Garth Brooks cross over from country to mainstream. And we actually are responsible for David Letterman being on The Tonight Show. How? Because Joey Bishop was performing in Las Vegas and we were visiting him and he was going to hire another comedian to write for him and we said, hey, there's a much better guy, his name is David Letterman, $25 a night and he introduces us at the comedy store, you like him better. So Joey said, have this David Letterman guy come to my hotel, ended up hiring him. So. 
Since then, we also had a book on the New York Times bestseller list, and it was called You'll Never Make Love in This Town Again. Now, if you sell 60,000 copies, you get on the New York Times bestseller list, and our book sold 450,000 copies. Jenny moved to the village of Oak Creek. She bought a home near the Dome House, this is back there, and I ended up following her. And since then, I've been very much involved in USO uh, things, and also uh, the military. I joined the Sedona Marine Corps League Detachment 1237, Ray Stevie, uh, Lloyd Delacourt. I became an associate member and a lifetime associate member. I actually have a gold card and it's a gold card that I can't get in trouble with. <laughs> <laughs> and the Marine Corps League very graciously paid for my um, honor flight to Washington, D.C. with Warren Imus, my brother-in-law, 93 years old. You want to stand up, can you? <laughs> and we're going to be going and visiting the World War II Memorial, and thank you, thank you, thank you to the Marine Corps League for doing that for us. I'm just beyond grateful. Also am an honorary commander of the 944th Air Medical Staging Squadron at Luke Air Force Base, thanks to Colonel Judith Patton and Colonel John Skineski. Can you stand up? They are married to each other and they're both colonels. There you go. And they are members of the Marine Corps League as well. And what do you do as the commander of the 944th? Gee, funny you should ask. <laughs> um, at the a 944th is a reserve medical squadron that cares for sick and wounded soldiers globally and moves them through the aeromedical evacuation system to a higher echelon of care during contingency operations. We are doing a military dog for the Luke Air Force Base dog kennels, and that is through the Verde Valley Military Service Park. Diane Jones, the mayor of Cottonwood, is here. Could you stand up? <laughs> the Vietnam Veterans of America gave me a very, very special award. Now, and they flew me to Wichita, Kansas with my significant other, <laughs> Fred, Fred Chen. And, and this award, by the way, was given previously to Vicki Carr, um, uh, Nancy Sinatra, Johnny Rivers, and Bob Hope. It's called the uh, President's Award for Excellence in the Arts. Uh, if you have a story and you have not been videotaped at the library, you must seek out Jolene. She's amazing. And my personal story is at the Library of Congress. They actually called and asked, I said, can I give you my accordion? And they said, no, we don't want the accordions. <laughs> so actually, my accordion, my original accordion, Fred bought this for me, is at the La Posada Hotel in Winslow, Arizona. Arizona, in the Doubleman Twin Room. They have a room named after Jenny and me. God bless them. And this next video is a video uh, in honor of my twin sister. And I hope you enjoy it. I've lived, I've laughed, I've loved, I've cried. I've told the truth when others lied. And when they told me what to do, I told them what I'm telling you. Life is just a boxing ring. If you grab the ropes, you won't fall down. Don't let them tell you how to fight. You may not have a second round. Live each day and don't look back. Just remember all you have is now. Make believe a birthday 